You have heard of several different terms thrown around when in discussions about networking or streaming or anything that has to do with internet and device connectivity. In this video, I'm going to point out a few basic networking terms every CTS holder needs to know about. We're going to define what a network is, the different network typology types, and devices found on these networks. Then we're going to discuss what a MAC address is and why we need IP addressing. Then finally, connection types. First up, a network. A network is a group of devices that are connected to allow the flow and distribution of data to and from each other. Similar to how we might think of an audio or video network of connections, there are several types of networks to consider. Now, there are many ways to define a network type, so depending on the client needs depends on their best choice. There are a local area network, wireless local area network, campus area network, metropolitan area network, wide area network, storage area network, virtual local area network, and personal area network. A local area network connects devices within a confined geographical area. A LAN is typically used to connect network devices over a short distance and generally owned or controlled by the end user. A LAN can be as small as simply two devices connected to each other. A wireless local area network is a wireless LAN. A wide area network covers a wide geographical area and it is considered the largest type of network. A campus area network connects multiple LANs in a limited geographical area such as a university, campus, or cluster of buildings. A metropolitan area network is a network that covers a geographic area such as a local city. A storage area network is a high-speed, special-purpose network that interconnects data storage devices. A virtual local area network is created when network devices on separate LAN segments are joined to form a logical group, which then spans the local LANs or subnets. A network can have over 4,000 VLANs active on it, and it is used to limit communication and add security. A personal area network is a limited range network that serves a single person or small work group with no connectivity to the outside. As you can see, in its most basic form, what really defines the network is the range that it covers. The internet itself is the largest WAN as it covers the whole earth. LANs are connected to WANs through routers and therefore we have our internet. Okay. Now that we have the networks and types of networks defined, there are several versions of layouts called topologies. Though there are several types of network topologies available, there are three main types. Let's start with star. In this layout, all nodes or devices connect to a central point, such as a router, switch, or hub. Stars are hierarchical, and each node has access to the other nodes through the central point. If at any one node fails, information still flows. The central device is a single point of failure, however, and if it fails, the whole structure fails. Now we have a mesh topology. In a mesh topology, each node connects to every other node. Mesh topologies provide fast communication and excellent redundancy, ensuring that failure of no one device can bring down the entire network. Last, we have a partial mesh topology. With this structure, each node connects to several other nodes, but not to all of them. Partial mesh provides good redundancy, ensuring that several devices must fail at the same time before actual communications fully cease. This method does add latency or hops to get to destinations, but communication is still possible to working nodes. Which type of topology chosen for a network depends on the needs of the final system, budget, and infrastructure capacity. Now remember the term node I've been mentioning a lot? A node is anything that sends and receives data. So any physical device from, say, a PC, DSP, TP, VO over IP phone, switch, router, gateway, they're all nodes, and also any device from IT to AV. This term can be broken down into two groups. A client is typically a piece of hardware that requires connectivity like a display, where a server can be a hardware or software device that is defined by something that provides a service for the clients of the network, like, say, a media server, or an email server, or an FTP site. So you know what a laptop is or projector is as a node, right? But there are three specific nodes that help connect and establish the network. 
switches, routers, and gateways. A network switch provides a physical connection between multiple devices. As each device is connected, the switch collects and stores device's MAC address, we'll get to that later. There are typically two kinds of switches, unmanaged and managed. Unmanaged means no configuration options where managed allows all kinds of configuration options and control. For example, a managed switch is the first place a VLAN must be configured to let the rest of the network know that the data is part of a specific group. A router forwards data between devices that are not directly physically connected. This requires an IP address, which we will discuss that later as well. And a gateway is a router that connects a private network to outside networks. This also requires an IP address. A gateway is a specialized router that also does network addressing translation that allows for private address for your network to be replaced with the global address used on the internet when transmitting data and when receiving it back. Each option here allows for widening the connectivity inside a given network. It is possible for these three to be blended together into one device, like what you might have at your house. All right. We know that each device has a given name as far as a laptop or projector, but how does the network itself actually communicate to all of its parts? Each unit in the network has a digital address and each network has a protocol to deliver the data back and forth. These devices need something to set them apart from each other so the right data gets to the right device. These rules and protocols are outlined by what's called the OSI model to communicate. A MAC address does just that as well. Each device has what is called a network interface card, and this card has a media access control address. You have heard these as NIC and MAC. The NIC is the interface that allows the connection, whereas the MAC is the device's physical address. It typically looks something like 30-65-EC-6F-C4-58. This format is called hexadecimal notation. Now, once these devices are actually connected, the device is assigned an IP address or internet protocol address. Why do these devices need two addresses? Well, just because a unit is present doesn't mean that there is yet a structure to receive the data. So IP allows for addressing, which are essentially rules for how each system is identified, what the addresses look like, and who is to follow those rules. It accounts for packaging the data, what information will be sent and how it will be sent via fragmenting, what path that data will take from their sources to their destinations. In short, IP accounts for structure, location, privileges, and access. They are limited to the size of the subnet in which they reside. Okay, we have covered what a network is, what types of network topologies there are. We also define the types of devices that can be found on a network. We went over MAC addressing versus IP addressing. Now it's time to review the possible mediums for connecting those devices on a network. Connectivity can be summarized into two categories, wired versus wireless. Typical wire options include copper cable, which is known as category cable or class cable, and the other option being optical fiber. Typical wireless options are plentiful and all have their pros and cons. Wireless allows for less cables and more access options for users. It is also scalable and typically low cost in most scenarios. Some not so good things are wireless networks tend to be insecure, slow, and can be affected by other radio frequency interface, AKA RFI. That wraps up a brief overview of some key terminology when dealing with networking. For more information on networking for AV, visit our website at avixa.org.